how to buy a condo for investment for retirement. All right, guys, we're going to talk all about buying condos to invest for your retirement. I really appreciate the question. If you've got a question like this, type it in the comments below and I'll put a video together for you. So um, let's talk all about this. Buying a condo for your investment for retirement. Well, first off, why would you want to look at a condo for investment for retirement? A lot of people like the idea of a condo because of what's called common space. Let's jump to the whiteboard and let me explain this. So when you own a house, we'll put this pretty little house right over here. You've got the yard, you've got the garage, you've got all this stuff you're responsible in and around this house. You've got the trees you've got to deal with and all that type of stuff. When you're dealing with a condo, whether it's a row home style where you've got you know your doors here and you know your windows and they're side by side or they're on top of each other called an apartment style condo um, where everybody's got their doors like this um, either way what you're dealing with here is the association has what's called common area and the common area the roads that come through here are basically owned by all of the owners the tree that's standing here is owned by all of the owners the exterior is owned by all of the owners the roof line is owned by all of the owners and so what happens is um, every single month you pay into what's called an HOA home owners association maybe it's $150 a month maybe it's $200 a month whatever the case is and the homeowners association has a board of directors which is typically made up of a few people that are here and maybe a professional manager and every single month they meet but there's money sitting there maybe there's $20,000 and then what they've done is they have put a budget together for the year and what they're projecting. And they say, you know, every few years we've got to do the roads. Okay, so we've got to save this much money. So when we have to do the roads, we'll have the money to do that. We've got to paint the exterior of the building every few years. But some people like this for an investment because they don't have to deal with the outside. Who cuts the grass and waters the, the waters the grass and takes care of the trees and does the roof and who does the exterior of this building is all handled by the homeowners association. But you've got to be really careful about this because if the homeowners association is doing a horrible job, or they're not having enough money, they can do what's called a cash call. Now, if they don't have enough money, let's say this road caves in and they don't have enough money to take care of the road, what they can do is bond, where they basically go and get a loan from another place that says, here's $50,000 and you've got to pay us back. And then they increase the HOA. Now the HOA is $200 a month because 50 of that per month goes to pay this bond off. And that's something that can be done. Um, so you've got to be careful because that HOA can go up over time. But the nice thing about it, if it's a well-ran HOA for people that are looking to invest in a condo for retirement is the, the stuff you have to take care of, you only have to take care of, let's change colors here. You're only taking care of the inside of your unit, which limits, you don't have to deal with the roofs, the outside and all that type of stuff. It limits about half of the stuff you're dealing with when it comes to having to fix things or repair things or things breaking or anything else. Now, keep in mind, you're still paying for this stuff outside because you're paying in the HOA and you're probably even paying a little bit more because there's some management involved there, but you're not having to be responsible for making the decisions or seeing what happens there. So a lot of people like it for that. Uh, one side note with the condos is if you're managing long distance, some people really like condos for that reason as well um, because they're not having to deal with as much stuff on the exterior of the building. So that's the one thing. Now let's talk all about this buying condos because at the end of the day, it all comes down to this beautiful word called cash flow, okay? Cash flow is the difference between what you pay and what you get. So although I think these drawings are absolutely beautiful, we are gonna move on and talk all about this cash flow subject, right? So cash flow, as we talk about, is this a good investment or not, really comes down to the rent minus all your expenses equals your cash flow flow. And a lot of people don't think about what all expenses they have. So you may have a mortgage. Okay. You may, ha you're going to have taxes always. You may have an HOA as we talked about that, but you're going to have a few other expenses that you're probably not thinking about. So you're going to have repairs. Repairs is when the toilet breaks or whatever the case is, you're going to need a budget for repairs. You're going to need what are called capital improvements. Capital improvements is when you have to repaint the entire thing, or you have to put a new um, AC unit on, or you have to put a new roof, which you wouldn't have if it was a condo, as we've been talking about, because the HOA would do that. But capital improvements. The other thing you've got to look at is vacancy. 
Um, so those are the things that you're going to be looking at when it comes to this. And so when you take all of that stuff out, which these things are a little bit unexpected. And so what I do is I budget for these things. So every single month I put a percentage in. For me, 5% is what I keep in repairs, 5% for capital improvements, and 5% for vacancy. So 15% of the rents, meaning if the property rents for $1,000, I'm going to put $150 into a savings account so that when these things happen, happen, I have some money to take care of that. Then I'm going to pay my mortgage. And then what is left ends up becoming my cash flow. Let's say it's $150. I don't know what, what that number is. So then you're going to say, well, wait a minute. Why even buy a rental property um, if I'm not making a whole lot of money? Well, there's a couple of phenomenons that you've got to really realize here. Number one, Property values go up over time. We call this appreciation, okay? This is property values going up over time. Next, we have some tax benefits. We're typically able to write off some of these expenses and we are able to do some deductions, right? So um, we're able to do an accelerated amortization schedule or accelerated depreciation schedule if we go and we get a study done or we're able to just do a straight line depreciation. So we're getting some tax benefits from doing that. The other thing is rents go up over time. That's the other thing that you see is rents go up over time. So this $1,000 properties that I was buying that I bought and the rents were $800 a month are now $1,500 a month. And that's just over the course of about 15 years. I've seen rents that have actually doubled and we're continuing to see that. Now it's not straight line forever. It goes up and down and up and down and up and down, but the trajectory is that it's actually going up. So you're seeing rents go up over time. You're getting tax benefits. You're getting the appreciation that's happening on this along the way. So there's multiple ways. And so one of the things you're, if you're looking at buying a condo for an investment retirement, the sooner you buy that condo and let appreciation taxes and rents going up over time, the better. But I want to make sure if you're buying that condo, you've got to be in an area where at a minimum, you're breaking even after you take out the repairs, the capital improvements and the vacancy. And you say with the taxes um, and the rent and the appreciation, I'm okay doing that or um, at least make a little bit of money along the way. The other thing you've got to talk about here that a lot of people forget about is management. Um, are you going to self-manage the property? If not, you've got to put probably 10% in management that's all built into this as well. Now, if you are enjoying this, and I certainly hope you are, please hit that thumbs up button and tell me that I'm doing a great job. It's free to do, and it means a lot to me. So I would really appreciate it. So with all of this, it really comes down to finding a great deal. If you're looking for a condo, you've got to buy a, at a place where you're going to make some money. So there's a couple of things to keep in mind here, and we're going to let this go again. So the, I look at rental properties in different classes, right? So um, this happens a lot with commercial property. So in commercial property, they'll have A class, B class, C class, A minus, A plus, you know, whatever the case is, B minus. And basically what they're saying is A plus plus is like the best property. It's new. It's in the best location. It's right off the freeway, whatever the case is. B, uh, C's are older properties and that type of stuff. And I do the same thing with rental properties. And so here's one of the things is you're C-class properties when you're dealing with rental condos, um, you're going to be dealing with stuff that's old. The location's not great. It's an okay location, maybe a poor location. A D would be a bad location. What tends to happen is if you're willing to invest in these C-class properties, they typically have more cash flow. And the reason for that is they have to spit out more cash flow to make it motivating for somebody to buy it. However, you typically have a lot more maintenance when you're dealing with these because you've got more tenant turnover and everything else. The A-class properties are typically a lot more expensive and your returns are not quite as good. And so I like to stay in this B-class properties. So I don't want to be in the bad neighborhoods, but I don't want to spend the money to be in the most expensive neighborhoods. And one of the things that you'll find is your price and your rent do not have, sorry, that's not the right graph, but your rent do not go up at the same amount, right? So the price of the property, a property that's, that sells for a half a million dollars and a property that sells for $250,000, the difference in rent, let's say the rent on this is 1,500, the rent on this may be 2,000. What I'm basically saying is you wanna try and find a sweet spot here because it disproportionately goes up. The amount of price disproportionately goes up 
from the rents. So you want to make sure you're finding this sweet spot of where is the um, lowest price property that produces the best. And that usually comes with a percentage where you say, hey, what percentage of the purchase price am I getting in rents? And it used to be in the good old days, if you were you wanted to be at a 1% ratio, meaning if you bought the property for $200,000, you wanted it to be spitting off $2,000 is what you would want that rent amount to be. Now, that certainly hasn't been the case in most marketplaces, although a few still have that. But this percentage, don't get hung up on the percentage. That's how you look at it. So if you're looking at one condo versus another condo, you're going to say, what can these rent for? Based upon what they rent, divide that by the purchase price. That's going to give you some percentage. The higher that percentage is, the better it is for you because you're getting more cash from that property. So with all of this said, one of the things that could be really helpful for you is a calculator that does some of these things for you. So you can plug it in to make some determinations about which condo is the best one as an investment for retirement, or if there's another one, what, how to compare these. If you'd like to get a copy of my rental calculator, I'll send it to you for free. All you've got to do is text me your email address at 435-294-0433. If you text me over your email address, I will send it to you. I also have a great video on the questions you should ask when buying a condo. You're going to want to check that out. Um, I also have a blog on long-term versus short-term rentals. Yeah, I'll put that in the description below so you can read up on that as well. Now, if you're not currently a subscriber, please, I'd love to have you as my newest subscriber. Hit that subscribe button and make it a very profitable day. Bye for now. <laughs>